Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we're trying to do here every day, right alongside you. It is Thursday, October 15th, 2020. Our quote of the day, you have to know who you are and have to control your emotions or someone else will. That is from Jay Ray, um, who we had on the show. Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday, yeah. Um, Happy uh, Thursday, everybody. It's almost the weekend. Uh, Happy to be with you guys, our hashtag Heal Squad. Yet again, as we um, wrap up a really great week of amazing guests. A lot of aha moments, a lot of takeaways. We're going to chat about those today. But first, have you subscribed to YouTube? Mm -hmm. Because if you haven't, please do. Helps us, helps you. You'll get those notifications. You'll never miss an amazing episode. Um, and of course it helps other listeners find the show. So please hit subscribe and join us officially to be a part of the team officially. If you haven't found us on Instagram at better together with Maria, that is our hub guys. That's where we can really communicate and, and be in our, our vortex, which is exciting. And we're putting up really great content and quotes and all kinds of things to keep us accountable in the journey every, every single day. Um, we are building our mailing list and we're going to start with our first piece of exclusive content there in a while. Um, I'm going to share my top five new beauty product finds that I am obsessed with. It's so hard not to share them every day, but, Hmm. um, we are going to share them, uh, with you guys. So finally, finally, we're going to share. Yes. Um, so go to mariamanunos.com subscribe you just put your email address in we won't abuse it fyi by the way and uh we aren't selling it to people (laughs) that's not happening either so uh join us there and we will um be putting out that mailing list do we know when we're doing the newsletter with the five beauty products no we should do it this week though okay my plan i have it in my schedule to work on wednesday okay so wednesday so you're gonna get at the end of the week Ooh, what a fun end of the week treat hurry up and join and we will be getting that out hopefully by Friday, if mm-hmm. not by Monday. Okay. Um, we have merch coming soon, guys. And you know what I realized? Huh. So we were talking about how we're planning, if all goes well, to go back to to the West Coast. And I realized we could pop in on Andrew Lee and see the actual product in yeah. person and, and, the f- and f- actually get to it. I know Kevin's working on a few things um, before we get to the actual designing stat- like state of it all. I have my mood boards that I keep adding to, but we can go there and look at the shells, which is basically like, okay, we're going to choose this t-shirt. I'm going to choose this sweatshirt and, you know, whatever. So, so that could fun. be a fun excursion. Really Andrew's fun. Got the biggest um, warehouse. It's like 18 football fields big. It's so massive. Where is it in LA? In Van Nuys. <sighs> And so, yeah, I'm really giddy. Actually, if you make a note of that, because as I plot out the short time we're there, I want to make sure that I get that in. I love that. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited. And we would love to get your feedback, everybody. In fact, we should put out an Instagram or a DM, uh, a DM, a story Mm -hmm. giving people kind of the chance to write in what they would want. Totally. So let's put that out there today. Um, so we're going to basically, I've been kind of dreaming up quotes, photos, like cute things that are better together, um, that you guys are going to enjoy. And, uh, I can't remember what else, but let us know what you're into. Are you into the hoodie? Are you into a zip up? A cute jogger, some sweatpants. Yeah. I just added those to the mood board. Oh yeah. Um, are you into quotes, photos? What would you like? the most and we will do that we have we've gotten a couple emails already which is very exciting okay very cool so thank you guys so we will put that up on both my insta story and better together better together um maybe we don't do it on my story yet just better together let's keep it to our for people inside group Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you're listening to the show and you're not following better together hit pause go to instagram hit follow and then come right back and hit okay here's us going silent for everyone to go to Instagram really quick. Ready? Yep. 
Okay, that was enough time. Thanks for they following us, guys. They did. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Let me check if the followers went off. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let's do it again for the people who got caught off guard. Ready? Okay. I figured right, out in my head. Good. That's how long it took to type it in. Yeah. Better together with Maria. Smart. Anyhow, um, <laughs> if you miss, missed our Bachelor after show, you can check that out, of course. But be sure to join us next week. It's super fun. We all get together. We'll watch The Bachelor. And, uh, you know, we'll be chatting with different um, Bachelor alum. And, of course, our esteemed panel of uh, Bachelor experts. That's right. Led by Mr. <laughs> Jeffrey Crane Graham. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm so. getting the hat back on, guys. I'm so excited. I know, right? Well, it's just such a yeah. fun way to see everybody and enjoy time. Mm. You know, life is very busy. It can be very challenging. A lot of people are going through a lot of hardship. So to have this appointment viewing where we can escape and all be together and have fun. And what I like is for us, like our community, our Hill Squad are all like-minded people who are on a journey to get better. Yep. And it's the same feeling I've told you guys before I feel when I go to a Tony Robbins seminar. I feel safe mm. to be in that element because I know... It's your, it's your people. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. with our people. So let's watch The Bachelor with our people. Like that, I, I thought so, that was such a fun yeah, idea. So, so fun. Um, join us. And then, of course, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, this is the time, guys. We are totally killing it there. We have extra content, ad-free content, the workshops and the seminars alone are worth so much, so much, so much. Having access directly to the guests that we have on our show with the level of acclaim and expertise that they have where you can interact with them one-on-one -on -one is game changing. Yeah. So uh, click the link tree in my Instagram account or better together with Maria because you just followed it. So easy. <laughs> just go to the little link. And then that will link you to Patreon and join us over there. In the meantime, uh, I have to share. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm just missing Kevin so much, but we had a moment yesterday. So yeah, uh, not yesterday. The other day, um, Kevin took my mom to her appointments at Cedars. So she gets her infusions. She actually got her flu shot. I'm hoping she's feeling good today. I haven't checked in on mm -hmm. her yet. Um, but, you know couple the next day and a couple days later you just like hope everything just stays stable in there anyway um i i snapped a photo of him while he was waiting in the waiting room because there was a phone number he needed so i said hold on i pulled up the phone number and i did a screenshot and i sent it to him and he goes why in the heck did you take a photo of me and i look horrible and I said, I wasn't thinking about you. I was just thinking about getting you this number and we're on a FaceTime. So this was the only oh way I could God. do it, right? I couldn't be typing in the number and looking at it. I just screenshot it and send it. So then, Jeff, why don't you tell everybody what ensued after that? So, like, it's one thing that I love about this show is we have a thread. And, you know, every, like, close team has a text thread. They have a Slack thread. And I feel like the real antics happen on our text thread. So, so true. we're sending some, we're sending some voice memos going back and forth, talking production, talking logistics. And all of a sudden, Kevin just sends the photo. And I haven't seen it yet. None of us have seen it. They don't know anything. No, I'm like, they don't know happening? anything. Uh, I, I don't know if you have it, Kels, but yes, just picture I do. Kevin looking all right. confused, a little concerned. A little maniacal. He's wearing They're his COVID mask, now. but it kind of looks like a crazy <laughs> surgeon mask. And um, my first thought, very quickly, was <laughs> Kevin looks like he could be the star of the next iteration of Dirty John, <laughs> which, if you haven't seen that show, is about a serial killer. Yep. So, Dirty John, um, put that picture back up. I don't think people can live with that long enough. So, because I'm going to describe now. <laughs> So Jeff says Dirty John, and I'm dying laughing because what you don't know is when we watched Dirty John, which was everything, by the way, it was so good, horrible true story, but a very entertaining um, piece that I think it was done on, was it Lifetime or one of those channels? Bravo. 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 Mm. And so mm. after that, I would mess with Kevin. I'm like, you're Dirty Kevin. You're Dirty Kevin. <laughs> and so he'd be like, why would you say that? So when I see this picture, I see like the mad scientist that's reaching into his vial and he's like, this isn't going to hurt. Totally. 
Um, but I did. I wrote back Dirty Kevin and I literally started crying laughing in bed. And I'm going to go back. <laughs> he just So what Kevin did was he took the the screen grab and just closed up on his face. And he says, I'd say this is someone who is pretty effective, lost it. And the the hysterics that like ensued after where I was crying, laughing, truly on the crying, boys, you guys truly crying <laughs> um, was so hilarious. And I don't know, I just I called them after and we were dying laughing. And then I just started hysterically crying and I said, I'm so emotionally confused. I didn't know what to do because I'm laughing. I'm crying. I can't stop. There's something about that photo where I just I just can't stop. It's so funny. The best part, Jeff, is I can hear Maria doing this. Whenever Maria's going to voice memo me, I know she's going to do it because we're usually, what, like a room apart? Yeah. She's upstairs. I'm downstairs. I can hear her. I'm like, she's crying right now. She's laughing so hard. She's crying. Oh, yeah. sweet Kev. Yeah. It's so bad. Hilarious. Oh, my God. And I was like, I think it's because I miss you that I'm crying. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm so confused. I mean, he kind of looks, it's like he looks sad and distraught. It's like, it's, it's, it's all the emotions. It's pathetic. It's like all these things. Oh, <laughs> you know what I bet it is, Maria, is I know one of my favorite things to do with Laura is laugh. And, mm -hmm. you know, both you and Kevin have such a sharp sense of humor. And mm -hmm. both of you love to laugh so much mm -hmm. that I bet you miss laughing with him. And I bet that was a moment where you thought this would be so much fuller if I were actually with Kev laughing <laughs> so with him. So true. Friend. You know? <laughs> I bet that's what probably, got you. Probably. Probably. Oh, man. We do. We laugh a lot. I, yes, uh, do. I, you know, I always find it to be such a compliment when he thinks I'm funny because mm. Kevin is really, really funny mm -hmm. and he's a joke writer and a comedy writer and all of that. So, you know, I've spent my entire adult life with him watching him direct actors and all this stuff so when he looks at me and he's like you are so funny i'm like really every time he like catches me off guard with that and when i can get him to laugh because he's not an easy laugh kevin's not gonna just laugh at anything right. he's not gonna give his laugh away no he does not i give my laugh away. i laugh at pretty much anything yeah same um but yeah so it's it's always like my biggest compliment when i can get him to just crack up and I die so it's funny um, pick. So why don't we <laughs> go through our takeaways from the week? Because between J. Ray and um, oh Allie. gosh, and Ali, uh, we had a lot of really great kind of mm -hmm. interviews this week. We really did. Amazing. Who wants to start? Oof. Jeffrey Green Green. is huge. Less Kelsey. I say ladies first, but I'm also happy to hop in. Kelsey's like, shit, I need to organize my thoughts. Jeff, go to you. Jeff, go. <laughs> Jeff, I have this, okay, yeah. let me just paint you this picture of my tiny little table and my 42. <laughs> no, you go. All good. Kelsey's doing a lot. I um, And there was just so much with the Jay show. But, I know. You know, I think in terms of the whole week, I really appreciated how both of our guests were open about their relationships with God. And, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people have different relationships with God or maybe different views on God. But um, we talk about God a lot on this show and what God means to us as individuals. And as someone who's passionate about their faith, I love hearing conversations and hearing people's perspectives on God and divinity. And what Jay talked about yesterday with God's signs, this was her quote, which I loved. She said, God is very good at giving us big red bushes, flaming red bushes. And instead we say, can I have a bottle of water and put that bush out? And um, first of all, Jay spoke in so many beautiful metaphors yesterday that were like so funny and down to earth. But what mm -hmm. she's saying here is, God is talking to us all the time. He's telling us things all the time. And unfortunately, we don't always like God's plan. We like our plan and we refuse to listen, even though God has a better plan for us. And God is trying to tell us that plan all the time. And I think, you know, some people call it intuition. Some people call it their gut instinct. For me, it's God trying to talk to me and say, hey, Jeff, listen up. And um, she talked about how when we listen to God and we experience change, it might feel like a thunderstorm. But when we don't listen to God and he has to get in there on our behalf, hmm. it's an earthquake. So sometimes we just need to be ready to experience that thunderstorm and just experience some rain rather than having to experience the earthquakes that sometimes God throws in our life to make these big changes. Yeah, hmm. I know that that's 
kind of how I felt with the brain tumors is like I wasn't going to stop unless God did something really major. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of my mission is to not have people get there. Like, yeah. why can't we hear the thunderstorm? I agree. I agree. That resonated with me a lot, too, because Maria, I've told you this story. But before I left my last ta- toxic job, I had a couple of like, hey, red flag, hey, red flag that I now look back and I'm like, oh, crap. And it was two days before Christmas. I was on my way to no I wasn't on my, I was on my way to my boss's house out of my own heart because we, I wasn't working had to bring her something blah 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 and on my way to the airport then after that and I ended up getting in a huge car crash this woman didn't yield and smack like totaled my car and it was the craziest thing because I literally was fighting myself going back and forth when I left the house like do I need to go it's the right thing to do. It's Christmas time. I'll go bring her this stuff like and wrecked my car. And I remember just getting out and I was like, okay, I get it. I hear you. I'm done. Like, yeah, it was like, it gives me chills still. It was wild. Wild. Did you have anxiety going there? Like big did you time. F- you felt so conflicted. Big time. Yeah. And I remember calling my mom. She's like, no, you're like, that's you. You're a good person. It's the right thing to do. Like, I think it's a good call. You should go. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't know. Yeah, it was crazy. So that really, really hit me. And that's minor compared to a brain tumor, right? So yeah. it's like, you got to listen to those signs. You have to listen to the red the red sticky note on the door. Yeah. You know, it's it's really crazy. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like I say um a lot. I got to fix that. <laughs> uh, self-critique. But why I want to have her come back is because I really want her to share how to listen to your gut Mm -hmm. because I have this thing where like even this morning I was asking clear questions like what am I supposed to clear out of my life right now and where am I supposed to go like all these questions and answers were flooding in but I'm like is it me Mm. did I just make that up Mm -hmm. or did it come but now I've cultivated enough of the skill to know nope just trust it because there's a moment where you will second guess it and if the answer came through and it was yes but then you're like "Mm," that's when you know it was yes the second you're like "Mm," because now your rational brain is thinking and trying to like compute to see if it's the correct answer Mm -hmm. but there's it's not it it already came but you're right you're so right because it's like you'll sit there and you're like did I make that up? Am I telling myself no because I really don't want to do it? Or am I telling myself yes because that's what I really want? Like, is that my gut? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's wild. And you're a very intuitive person. And I think that I'm a very intuitive. I know that I'm a very intuitive person. So it's wild, those different messages, especially when you're in a situation that, like, before I got in my car, got in this car accident, I was just, like, programmed in a way where I felt guilty I don't know like all these different factors Mm -hmm. play in right so if you can't push that aside I mean like Allie was saying if you don't know who you are like Jay was saying if you don't know who you are you don't really know who you are without all of these other things you're not gonna be able to listen to your gut so I I would love that I have something to add to that yes so I read from our friend Dr. Nicole LaPera who we've had on the show. And if you haven't listened to her episode, it is a must listen to. So she put out a post yesterday and it was people pleasing and then she crosses it out, attempting to control how people view you. Mm. <laughs> so Sorry, I literally like just, my jaw dropped when I heard that just now. That's incredible. Yeah. So by you wanting to people please her, you were trying to control her view of you. Yep. But guys, let's think about this for a second. Why does her view of you truly matter? If you look at it and say, was this someone that I really respected? Was this someone who Mm -hmm. added to my life? Is this someone who's been helpful, who has good intentions for me, who is a good person? Then, okay. Then absolutely. Then absolutely, Mm -hmm. I will people please you Mm -hmm. because I'm not trying, I'm trying to win your trust in that moment. I'm trying to build a relationship with you I'm trying to show you who I am in a sense right but when you're people pleasing to people to try to control them now this actually happened with Allie and I didn't get to it because I lost my train of thought 
but by her trying to people please, she's trying to control people's perceptions and beliefs about her when in fact they they can't you can't control what they believe nope. about you. They're going to believe what they think and in fact, if they already think bad things about you and you know you're a good person, they're only going to dig in even more because that's what they want to mm. believe about you. You're never going to win. Yeah. You're never going to win. So now what you're doing is wow. you're giving over your power to an asshole mm -hmm. who wants mm -hmm. to hurt you, who mm -hmm. has not good intentions mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Hello. I've done this my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, because you're trying to control, like in my, from my experience, I just wanted them to be nice to me. Mm -hmm. Them, the collective bad people. So I people pleased. I sucked so much ass. I had poop all over my nose like let's be like <laughs> crass for a second right when they say you're brown nosing or whatever like because you're yeah. up somebody's butt right yeah Jeff, i never realized never... that's what that means well, what yeah i hope i have the right interpretation I think, but i, think so. I always i'm sure you do people always said that um because your nose was so up their butt but um that's so gross <laughs> shouldn't get that crass but it's funny but i i knew i had to do the song and dance because i was trained that people were jealous and people wanted to hurt me. So what I did is I ran that gerbil wheel and I was like, what else can I do to please you? Be nice to me. Please don't hurt me anymore. And what did I do? I basically had a sign on my head that said, kick me harder because I'm going to come back and give you more. Wow. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Rhea, that is such a breakthrough. For me, what's so incredible about that quote is sometimes when we're people pleasing, we think we're being nice. We think we're like helping that person, but by trying to control them in a way, we're actually being a little self-centered. Totally. Like that's the breakthrough for me is like, I feel yeah. like I could be a bit of a people pleaser, but when I rethink about it that way, that I'm doing that to try to control people mm -hmm. and like, then I'm like, whoa, that's a me issue. Like that's something I have to, that, you're is so right. A wow quote. Holy crap. That's amazing. Because it's like, put it back in Kelsey terms. She would have thought the same thing about me if I brought her the basket or if I didn't bring her the basket. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. me trying to sway her. Wow. Wow. Yep. And the universe being like, hold up, bitch. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have to, Damn. you have to determine whose opinions of you truly matter. Mm -hmm. And if you apply what J. Ray said, no one's really should, right? You are your own entity. Mm. You are your own being, right? Your parents are just humans who brought you into this world and probably worked their asses off for you and suffered and sacrificed for you, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, there are good circumstances and there are bad circumstances in, in the parental worlds. And we know that this nothing's all white picket fence and perfect for people. So you have to really look at whose opinion of you matters and look at that person and say is that someone whose values align with me whose morals align with me who I believe is a good person that I want to be reflective of in a sense right but otherwise like why are we wh what huh and 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 it goes back to a friend that I was advising recently I was like you're giving away your power Mm. by not thinking you have any, by not thinking you have a value. And so when you carry yourself like that, because I've watched, I've watched me walk into a room at a job and I've seen people with their sunglasses on, their big, you know, Hermes bag and they think they're fabulous. Those are just shields. Those are armors that they, they carry to intimidate you, right? And then on top of it, they walk in like their shit doesn't stink. And guess what? People believe them. Even the most untalented, like unbelievable contrast, right? Like, the, like when you look at two people, you're like, oh, come on. Are we even having the conversation? It's like, like a Tom Brady and, you know, someone who was in high school football, like in a place that doesn't even play football. Like right. it is right. so stark, the contrast, but yet yeah. how you carry yourself yields your energy and your results, right? So you could be a good person, you could be a pure person, you could be amazingly talented, and they're gonna treat you different because of how you view yourself. And just like Wendy Osefo said on one of our episodes, if you don't know who you are and you don't own that and you don't own your value, 
they're going to tell you what your value is. And then now you're going from where you are to where they think you are. And then the, the seven pain, to the two. The seven to the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pain that comes by having to get here. Now, I've had to do it where I've had to dim myself to make these people feel comfortable. And that's mm-hmm. been, whether it's in high school, in the workforce, whatever. My mom, it was like, Maria, they're just jealous. Maria, why, mom, why? Like, I just want to be friends with them. I just want to, mm-hmm. you know, do good work. Right? So you literally bring yourself down to here where you're like, okay, I'll just be this. And the pain that comes of just being this, when you know you could be this, mm. right? And then the pain of having to be who they think you are in a weird way mm-hmm. because they're putting it on you and you're accepting it. Oh, shit. I'm like... Unbelievable. I mean, I'm having breakthroughs as I'm saying all Me this too. stuff. I know. Me too. Yeah. I think, and Jay Ray said it really well yesterday. First of all, I love the way she talks. So if there's a chance you missed her episode, she <sighs> just has this way of delivering truth that's so like to the point. She says, I'm gonna try to do her voice. I hope it doesn't sound disrespectful. If you don't know who you are, you're screwed. You have to know who you are and you have to control your emotions as someone else will. You give your power away if you don't know who you are. And then she said, you're fighting, there's three versions of you constantly fighting. Your old self, who we're talking about, your very traumatized self, your higher self, who you're aspiring to be, and your actual current self. And what she said so simply and so beautifully was, you can't buy a new car if you're still driving the old one. So Mm -hmm. good. So, but here's my question. How do we do that? How do we, for everyone out there who, I mean, even I'm in this space, I know who I am, but there's parts of me I don't own. And like, I really do feel like every single day with this show, I'm, gaining tools, putting in my tool belt and getting growing better. and getting better. I really, really do. But when she was like, "You, if you don't know who you are, you're screwed. I'm like, that's so real. But I'm like, shit. Oh, like how? How? How do you get to know who you are? Yeah. I think that's where we have to sit down with pen and paper and yeah. make lists, right? Like, you know what, like, and we've had so many amazing experts mm-hmm. along the way on the shows that have helped us kind of figure that mm-hmm. out, right? So waiting for Santa to come down and be like, this is who you are, Kelsey. And you're like, oh, that sounds like me. Perfect. Thank you, Santa. No, we got to go do the work. Right. That's the work. Right. Right. So you got to sit down, go out to the pond, go into your car if you've got a noisy house, right? Mm-hmm. In silence, there is clarity. In noise, there is confusion. That's like a quote from Yogi, somebody. But you got to go somewhere quiet and you got to sit with yourself and you got to ask yourself different questions and write them down. Like, what makes my heart sing? Like Jay Ray said, what would you do today if you could? Mm-hmm. Right? That's going to say a lot about you. Right? Like, I know that one of the things that popped into my head when she said that was, oh man, I would be so adventurous. I would be traveling and hiking and climbing mountains and doing all this stuff. But that's not kind of the life I signed up for, Mm. (laughs) right? Like when you're in a marriage, you are in a compromise of sorts, right? Kevin wants to sit in a screening room. That's Kevin's mountain. That's his hike. That's his fly a plane. And so I have to, I had to figure out at some point in my life how I could get some of that stuff to fulfill me. And, And I've done that, right? Whether I've done Dancing with the Stars or... I've gone on like vacation adventures with Alyssa or whatever. Or slept in a storage container in Afghanistan, by the way. Exactly. That was huge. Exactly. (laughs) But you got to write down the things that make your heart sing and then who you are when no one's looking. Mm. Right? Like when no one's looking and I'm in my car and I see a dead animal by the street side of the street, my heart literally sinks into my throat, like hurts. And like I'm in pain. It's true. And so. I mean, you see it yeah. naturally anyway, <laughs> yeah. but like, that's who I am when no one's looking. And when when no one's looking, I have great compassion for people. I know that about myself. Um, and, you know, I think those are the things that we have to write down is like, what makes our hearts sing and who we are when no one's looking and being honest, right? And then you got to do the shadow work, right? So there's shitty things about us when no one's looking too, Right. So Kelly Kossow in that episode was amazing to talk about shadow work. But I think we need to know 
like a friend of mine who I was advising, like I said, I go, you know what you've brought to your job. Go in like you know it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's not just a statistic, right? Jeff, you're killing it booking. You're killing it with the reels. You're killing it with the... Own it, Mm -hmm. right? You are doing that. That's not something to just say, oh, yeah, but... And that's a lot of us, what we do. Oh, yeah, but... Like, I know I am great at what I do, but I've minimized it at every turn because the world conditions us to think that we're supposed to be super humble to the point of actually not even having a worth or or understanding our worth so you write that stuff down and then you like i said the list that was last week's episode keep reciting it till you believe it Mm. and so i know that i am um great at what i do i know that i'm great live and that i live to be live because that's when i have no handcuffs and i can just truly be me because a lot of people when you're producing they're all scared And so they kind of box you in and I'm like, I know I can create incredible moments. And so I remember when I did my first New Year's Eve with Fox, my producer was so amazing and she just like, let me go. That's awesome. And I was like, oh my God, no one lets me go. This is amazing. And I, you know, put a cop underneath my jacket. I had this big, um, like faux mink kind of coat. Your pink one? And no, it's a long to the floor. I think it was Mark Bauer, faux fur coat. And it was massive. And last second, I looked at the cop. I go, hide under my jacket. And he's like, what? And I go, will you hide under my jacket? And he goes, uh, OK. I'm like, I'm going to surprise everybody with you. Like, oh, my then, God. So like, they, they were like, you know, waist up. And I'm talking to the camera. And then I go, surprise, or something like That's that. I can't hilarious. remember. And how pops a cop. Like, just fun stuff where people can just, like, laugh with us. Um, and so. What the problem is, is, and I know I've, I suffer from this and I know Allie does too, cause I just, I get her very, very deeply is we're always waiting for someone else to tell us you're pretty, you're good at what you do. Oof. And we need to start telling ourselves that, right? We need to start telling ourselves, wow, you kicked ass today. Wow. You just like rock that eyeliner today or whatever it is. Um, why and and who are we really looking to get that compliment from ourselves but okay like there can be other people outside of mm-hmm. of us too okay but really examine is mm-hmm. that the person i'm really looking to get the compliment from mm. this shitty so angry person or mm-hmm. you know whatever they're mm-hmm. you know they're jealous or whatever is that really who I'm aiming to get my compliments from? Yeah. Like sometimes there are there are people in my career who try to micromanage my fashion, my hair, and I'm like, at some point I looked and I said, I wouldn't take one piece of fashion advice from you. <laughs> Why? And I've been in the fashion pages my entire career consistently. So I think I got this kind of down. <laughs> Why am I listening to you? Wow. I mean, other than the fact that my paycheck comes from you, I guess. But like, I think this is where you should just trust me. It's supposed <laughs> to be a collaboration. But, yeah. but like, this is my form of expression. Now, yeah. you as, uh, you know, a producer should have a say if I'm going off the rails or if I'm being, you know, to this or to that. or something. But you know I have good style. You know I have good taste. You know I'm not going to be in, inappropriate. Like, come on now. But yeah. there have been the people who, mm. and you're like, so I think that's like a big thing is just know who you're asking. I have, I've said this since my first book, like know who you're asking advice from, you know, who are you getting your advice from? The problem is I've watched a lot of people in my life. And this is another thing Jay Ray said. It's like your version of the truth. So Jeff and I get into an argument. He goes home to Laura and he's like, she's she's just so difficult and this and that and no 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 and she just is never happy or whatever he says and she's like oh jeff this is jeff jeff you're right (laughs) she's such a bitch you know she should just appreciate you you know you work so hard then there's maria you know jeff um 
I, I just, it, these are just the errors. Like I, they're just, this is just fact, right? Like, yeah. so here's my version, here's your version, right? Your version, this is obviously just an example. This is not true. <laughs> but, but your version is you go home because you feel victimized in a sense. You don't know how to take that failure on your end mm. and process it and say, ah, I'm just not making the mark. I got to I gotta step up my game. I've got to, you know, step it up. I've got to be more focused. I've got to try harder, whatever it is. Okay. What I've watched is, especially the millennial Jeffs, they go to their best friend who they don't even realize is jealous of them because Mm -hmm. they're working in a prestigious position. They give them shit advice and say, oh yeah, she's such a bitch. I've heard really horrible things about her. Blah, 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 right? And then your mind, now you're like fortified. You're like, yeah, I was right. Yeah, she is a bitch. And then what do you do? You come into work and you start tanking more and more and more. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because then that bitch says, Jeff, it's not working out anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. And now you're right on the bar stool next to your friend, and that's where they wanted you to be. Exactly right. You know, it's with any any feedback, you have to learn and grow from it. You know, I'm lucky that working with you, Maria, I get really great feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not happy with something, you're clear about what you want, which is a dream if you're working for someone, right? But I know some of you out there might be dealing with a manager where you're not, it's not as clear, Mm -hmm. but still, there's something there. You're still working with that person. So you have to learn for your own self, what can I learn? How can I grow from this? Even if it's really hard, Mm -hmm. even if the feedback doesn't feel fair, Mm -hmm. you've got to figure out what you can parse from that because it's your career too, right? Like it might mean moving on, it might mean, but you have to make a choice beyond just bitching Mm -hmm. because that won't help you. There's a, there is a solution there. You just have to, like you said, Maria, find the right people. And I think of Shauna's circles. That close circle, mm-hmm. you need, those are the people that you need to be asking advice from. And those are the people that need to have your back. And other you successful know, people that will give you a yep. perspective you never thought of. Your family's going to always rub your back. Always. Your family and your mm-hmm. close friends, unless you've got true, like like I'm a, the fairest, as you know, I'm mm-hmm. very fair. Anybody who comes to mm-hmm. me, you better be prepared, right? So sometimes people will avoid me because they don't want to hear it, but I'm going to be super fair right down the middle so i'm going to tell you where you're wrong Mm -hmm. i'm going to tell you where you can improve i'm just going to be honest um but most family members they want you to not be in pain because guess what then they Mm -hmm. have to deal with you Mm -hmm. so true (laughs) so true i mean the truth is like they also if they love you they don't want to see you in pain but they also don't want to deal with you Mm -hmm. complaining and crying all the time Mm -hmm. so so they're going to piggyback on anything be like you're right screw them leave them yeah Quit. Yeah. Quit. Uh huh. Come back home. One thing Laura and I will do, and you can take this or leave it. And I don't know what you guys will think of the strategy. Leave it. But- Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the intuitive in me well, knew what you were going to say, Jeff. I leave it. Yeah, Maria already heard okay, it. Okay. Bye. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll be like, okay, we have five minutes to bitch. Like, this is oh. your it sucks time. Let's just like let it all out. All of the evil, like the dark feelings, whatever you want to say. Let's write it down. Let's get it out. And then let's step back and like look for solutions. Like I know you want that space to vent and I'm mm-hmm. here. Like let's do it, but we can't we can't stay there. Even if it means we go for a walk and an hour later come back. So I found that's a nice way to like let it out, get some space, and then actually find some solutions. I love that. I like well, that, that also goes back to our guest Dean Graziosi when he said focus on the fix. Mm-hmm. Dean, so. and then I was gonna say, I keep telling myself expand your threshold and that was a tony expand 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 right so if there's something where you're like i can't this is hard i'm not able to do this but no expand your threshold that's right really good right and i keep honestly jeff never talked about she expands her threshold like i've never seen before well it's like there's always a solution and then if you try a million different things and then there isn't one at least you exhausted those different ideas in those different ways but if you can expand your threshold there's always something i think about tony telling us that story where he had to get to someone's concert oh michael jackson yeah and it was like the concert was starting and he couldn't get a helicopter and it was this whole thing and he ended up finding a way there and i was just like holy shit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not because he has money and it's not because he has people it's because he expanded his threshold of control Right. And it's like just 
yeah. just got to be like Nike. Just do it. Just, just do it. Figure it out. Where yeah. there's a will, there's a way. Yep. And Tony is a great example of that. Yeah. So I always think about that too. I like it. And Kels, I want to compliment you. I want to use this moment. That is oh, a God. huge asset you bring to this team. Even <laughs> yesterday, Kels and I were on a call. I feel like I'm pretty positive, but I was having a moment where I was like, Kels with these clips, like, I just don't know how we can do it. And you really challenged me like a good co-producer does to be mm. like, yes, we can, Jeff, like, let's talk. You gave me options. And I know I'm going to call myself out. I was being grumpy. Like, I was just not <laughs> wanting to hear the solution. And Kelsey, you walked it. You walked me through it beautifully. I was so grateful to have you as a co-producer in oh, that moment, just well, so all you. the listeners can hear. It's a great team. Great thank team. We're member. so lucky for Kelsey coming yeah. on board because she was like, you know, when you get like that, um, that point guard that just runs the offense and comes in and like is a new spark. Like you, yeah. you are the perfect complement for all of us. Like it was mm-hmm. like the puzzle pieces came together. And so now Jeff shines where he shines, you shine where you shine, and I shine where I shine. And then Steven, as he comes in, yeah. shines in his true. things. And so I feel like we've got like a really great, like I've never felt better. And I feel so lucky because um, we're really, we're really good. We're really good together, guys. We are. No, it makes me, and it's so crazy. So thank you both. I appreciate that. But it's also... Like coming from my point of view, coming from the nasty, nasty place I came from. And I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the world. I really want it. And we talk about this all the time because I learned so much. I learned so much. But coming into a place where I'm like, oh my God, I can be creative. I can shine. I can say something that's not gonna get shit on or shot down. I can actually ask questions. We all work together. Like it's just it's really, really cool. So I'm appreciative of you both. So thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, (laughs) we'll end it there. We're better together. Dang right. And we're better with you guys. So thank you for being with us every week. And thank you to all our new viewers and new listeners. Um, We are building this heel squad out. And like I said, we're going to be having some really cool merch coming your way so that you can remember these moments these points of inspiration that messages that you really want to carry with you every day you can carry on your hoodie um you can carry on your beanie whatever we're gonna make we're gonna make a bunch of cool stuff but um we really appreciate you guys because without you there is no journey to this um, together so and i have to say really quick maria i really appreciate all the dms everyone is sending to the Mm. better together instagram account i always screenshot them and share them with the team they're so beautiful. They're so amazing. So thank you guys for that. Yeah, we kind of start our start and end our days with a lot of these. Yeah. And we have a victories thread. So a lot of times it's like, oh, my God, we helped another person. Like it's it felt really so cool. good. So thank you guys for joining us every single day. Um, and next week, I want to let you guys know, we're going to be chatting with one of my favorite guests, Dr. Christy Funk. She is one of the top breast cancer surgeons in the world. She wrote an incredible book called, I think it's The Breast Manual. That if you have not gotten as a woman, get it now. It is absolutely invaluable advice. She researched so heavily, changed her entire diet for her entire family based on the research that she discovered that uh, even massive, massive cancer charities, massive diabetes charities, massive heart charities want to completely avoid because they're getting money from these people, people being the meat and dairy farmers and all of that. Mm. Anyway, um, she has incredible insight about um, COVID, of course, and how it's affected screenings and female care. So in honor of breast cancer awareness, we are having her back. And remember that we're going to be still doing our bachelor viewing parties. Join us, have a cocktail, have some fun with us, kick back. um, And then we do our after shows as well. So join us there. In the meantime, follow us at Jeffrey Crane Graham, at Kelsmeyer2, at Better Together with Maria. Mm. And be nice people, make good choices, and be present.